In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect any phone number to Retail AI and Vapi using SIP trunking. We're going to be diving deep into what SIP trunking actually is, and then I'm going to be showing you a step by step guide on how to connect a Twilio phone number to Retail AI and both Vapi as well. And by the end of this video, you have a complete understanding on how tr SIP trunking works, then also how to connect your phone number. So you can actually speak to your voice AI agents by calling them. And if you don't already know me, my name is Ashton. I've been helping business owners save time cut costs with AI systems. So without further ado, let's jump straight into a breakdown on what SIP trunking is, and then we'll dive deep into actually how to connect the phone number to both retail and Vapi. Okay, and before we really actually, you know, understand how to connect these numbers to Vapi and retail, we want to actually know how um, this SIP trunking process works and actually the process behind everything. So again, I'm just going to spend a few quick minutes explaining how this actually works, and then we'll dive straight into the tutorial. Again, if you do want to skip to a section part um, where you actually want to know how to connect the number to either retail or Vapi, depending on what platform you want. You can go down to the chapters in the YouTube video and actually skip directly to the part where we show you how to connect the number to either retail or Vapi. But again, let's get straight into it. So again, this is essentially how the flow works when someone is making a phone call to our number all the way to our AI platform right here. So again, surely we have the user up here. Again, the user is making a phone call using their phone number to a um, phone number. And that phone number is stored in what we call a PSTN network, right? It's essentially this big network of all these phone numbers. It's this big advanced, you know, old system, right? Using these little um, satellites right here. Again, that's how they make the connection around the world. Um, and then from there within that network, um, the user has called a number, right? And that number is associated to Twilio, right? Because this is the platform we're going to be using to buy that number from, right? And then from there, once Twilio receives that connection, they notice that that number is associated to our SIP trunk, right? And the SIP trunk essentially is the process of connecting this PSTN network to our AI platform, right? And for inbound, we use something called a SIP URI, which is essentially the connection to create an inbound connection to connect the user's phone number. And for outbound, we use something called a termination, right? So again, those are the two differentiating factors um, between an inbound call and an outbound call, right? So again, the user's phone number calls our phone number. The phone number is associated with Twilio. And then from there, Twilio needs to send that phone number and send that data to our AI platform. And then from there, our AI platform will essentially conversate with the user. It'll do its normal process. And then it will come back through this, you know, little connection and it'll go all the way back to the user. So again, that's just a quick breakdown on how it works, right? And then with outbound calls, it's a little bit different, right? So again, our AI platform is going to be making an API request um, with the phone number that it needs to make an outbound call from our phone number. And then from there, it's essentially the same process, but it's reversed, right? So again, Twilio is using a SIP trunk to initiate a connection between our AI platform, right? And the PSTN network, which is essentially where that user's phone number is hosted. It goes straight to the user. And then from there, it'll conduct its normal process like here. So again, it'll contact the LLM. It'll make any, you know, cool tools. It'll check availability, um, conversate with the user like it is on a voice AI platform. So again, that's just a quick breakdown on actually how this system works. And again, what we're going to be going deep into is actually this process right here. So again, using a number we have bought or ported in from Twilio and connecting it to the voice AI platform in this term. In this case, it is retail and Vapi. So again, let's dive straight into the first tutorial, which is going to be on retail AI. And then we're going to go to Vapi. Again, if you are using either retail AI or Vapi, make sure to skip using the chapters below um, in YouTube. So again, let's get right into it. Okay, awesome. And the platform we're going to be using um, in this video is going to be Twilio. Now, again, the platform is pretty similar to a lot of the other providers such as Telnex, um, Playview, I think is another provider. But again, there's heaps of voice AI providers and heaps of um, phone number providers, sorry, that we can actually go ahead and buy a phone number. So there's two ways we can actually do that, right? We can either port a number, which is again, porting in an existing number. Again, this can be very useful for businesses if you are building these voice AI solutions out, um, if they don't want to switch any numbers and if they just want to port their original number. So I will show you how to do that um, when we get to that stage. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a SIP trunk, right? So again, what you want to do is you want to come over to this search bar and just literally search SIP um, trunk right here and then go down to elastic SIP trunks. <laughs> So before we actually go ahead and do this, I want you to open up this document or little docs right here, which is essentially going to be Retail AI's documentation, right? So essentially, the reason why we need this is because Retail AI is going to be providing us some information to make that connection from Twilio all the way to Retail AI. So make sure to go ahead and open up this document. I will leave the link to the document down below in the link in the description so you can go ahead and follow along, right? Once you have that up, come back to Twilio. 
And then what you want to do is you want to create a new SIP trunk, right? Give it a name, just do Twilio test um, or retail test, sorry. Uh, retail test, click create. And then it's going to be put into this little dashboard right here. So if we come back to the Twilio docs, again, we're just going to be referring to this because we need to get some information from them, right? We need to set up a termination, right? This is going to be for those outbound calls, right? So come back to here and then you want to go down to termination, right? And then what you want to do is you want to create a termination SIP URI. So again, this can really be anything. They said it can be any other name, but you will need this for later when we do make that connection to retail, right? Come down to SIP URI and I'll just put in um, my name right here. Again, it doesn't really matter what it is. We'll see if this is available. So again, that's available. Perfect, right? So just make sure that your SIP URI is available, right? Now, if we come back to Twilio, these are some of the things that we're going to need to create. So we're going to need to create a new credential list, right? So come back to credential list and I'm just going to name it my name and then we'll just do um, password and then we'll just do my name. which is just So again, just go ahead and create a password. But the main the main thing that you need to do here is actually save this, right? All right. Make sure you actually put in a password that meets their requirement limits. So again, I'm just going to create one right there. And boom, that'll work fine. Okay, let's go back to Twilio. And now we're going to need to create a new access controller. So this is where we're going to need these numbers right here, right? So let's come back to Twilio. Let's create an access controller. And then let's go ahead and name it default ACL1. Um, um, default ACL1, right? Again, it doesn't really matter what it is, right? We come back, then we're going to need to put in that address, which is going to be... Um, Four zeros, I believe. Yep, four zeros. And then we're going to need to put one right here. Okay, right. And then friendly name, it doesn't, it says that we don't need a friendly name. So let's go ahead and click create, right? Okay, and then let's do the same thing for this section, which is just going to be the same thing, right? Default um, ACL2, right? So again, perfect. And then the address is going to be one two eight triple zero. So one two eight. Awesome. And just making sure we get this done. So again, that's going to be our IP address range. And the same thing is essentially going to be one right here. So again, one, and then create ACL. Right. So now we have those two steps done, and now we need to set up an origination. So this is going to be for that outbound. Um, sorry for the inbound. Right. So um, we have everything we need here. So again, just go ahead and click save right here. Awesome. We have successfully updated. Let's come down to origination. Okay. Now we need to add a new origination URI. Come back to Twilio right here. Again, they make it, sorry, the documents right here. And then here you need to specify retail SIP address server, right? So again, put that in to here, SIP URI. Um, and then let's make sure... Everything's the same. So again, 10, 10 enabled. That's all good. Let's go ahead and click add. All right, so now that you have that SIP URI, we should be all good to go. Now let's come down to numbers. And essentially, this is again, really easy. We just need to import the number to Twilio. So again, if we come back here, this is where you're going to need to either add a number. So again, you can buy a number or add an existing number. I'm just quickly going to buy a number for the purpose of this video. So we can actually see how we can use this later as well. So again, I'm going to buy a number and then you can go down here, buy your number. Um, essentially, they've got heaps of different numbers right here. I'm just going to be using the US number. All right, so once you've either bought a number, again, now if you have bought a number, you can go down to add an existing number. Again, just wait for it to load right here. That's my number. So go ahead and do that and add selected, right? So that'll be put in there. And then from there, we just need to make the connection to retail. So again, it's going to be quite simple. Again, we've got that number right in there. So now what you want to do is you want to come over to retail right here. Again, I've just loaded up another account so I can show you how to do it. Um, we'll go to phone numbers, click plus up the top, and then we'll just do connect your number by SIP trunking. So again, that phone number is going to be the phone number that you have right here. So we can just go ahead and um, copy that, put it here, right? And then from there, that termination URI, right? That's going to be the same URI that we have. So again, it says look like XXP Twilio. So again, that's going to be the termination. Come back to termination. Let's copy this part. Come back here, right? And then come back here and I'll just copy that username right there in front, right? So again, that's what the URI would look like. And then the username and password, 
this is going to be your username and this is also going to be your password as well that you put in so again i'm just going to go ahead and put in Right, awesome. So now you should be all good to go. Go ahead and click save. You can give it a nickname if you want. It doesn't really need to be happening. Um, so go ahead and click save. And then right there, you will have your phone number all good to go. So now you can actually connect your agent, right? And you can make an outbound agent as well. And up here, we can actually go ahead and verify your identity to make outbound calls. But again, go ahead and click that. That's exactly how you actually import a number from Twilio to retail. Now let's dive into the next section, which is going to be Vapi. And this is a little bit more difficult because we need to actually configure some API requests to Vapi to import the number. So I will see you over in the guide for connecting it to um, Twilio to Vapi. All right, now we're going to be going through how to connect your number for outbound and inbound calls for Vapi AI. Now this process is going to be a little bit more difficult just because we need to use API requests, but it's not too bad. As long as you follow everything step-by-step -step that I'm doing, you should be able to get it set up. So again, let's come back to Twilio. And what you want to do up here, you want to search Elastic SIP Trunks, right? And then you'll be put into this little dashboard right here. Go ahead and click Create New Trunk. And then we'll do Vapi um, SIP Trunk. Click Create. And then from there, you'll be imported into this little dashboard right here. Now, if we come back over to the Twilio, we're going to need to set up a termination URI, which is going to be for outbound calls. So again, very similar if you did follow the retail section. Um, it's the exact same process. So again, termination URI, we'll just go down to VAPI, um, SIP. So again, something very similar to what they have right there. Um, it probably won't be available because that's what they've used, but let's see. VAPI, Sigtron, test. So again, give it a name, whatever you want, right? Again, that'll be available. Just make sure it is available. Let's come back to the documents. And now we need to allow SIP trunk to accept outbound requests, right? So we're going to need to put in these things right here. So again, come back to here. We're going to need to put, um, we're going to need to put um, IP access control list, right? So then come down to here. We'll just do VAPI um, auth1, right? CIDR network. Come back to VAPI. This is going to be um, this right here. So again, 4429, right? Come back to here. And then it needs to be 32. Awesome. 32, right? Go ahead and click create ACL. And then from here, we'll do the same thing. So we'll just do VAPI auth2. Come back to the documents. Again, make sure you have this documents pulled up so you can actually copy and paste this. Come back to here, click copy this and then let's come down it's going to need to be 32 again right so come back here 32 create acl awesome so we have those created now let's go down and we need to um yeah i'm pretty sure we don't need a credential list i believe we just need these access control lists right so it's a little bit different to um twilio because we're going to be using apis to create the credential instead of that right so again that's why we don't need this part so again we can go ahead and create um, save that right right now once you have that termination set up you want to come back to the docs again i'm just following this doc so again purchase or move a phone number to the elastic trunk right so come down to numbers right here all right and then go down to add number add an existing number again i've already bought a number in twilio if you don't have a number just go down to add number and buy number right there right so again add existing number we're going to come down to this number right here and we're going to select it right awesome right here right now, this is where we're going to need to use some API request credentials. So again, instead, unlike um, retail, where we had to um, create a credential list right here, right? Unlike retail, that's for that because that's what we did, right? We need to actually create an API request via APIs inside VAPI. So that's, the, um, that's where some people get stuck in creating these numbers, right? So again, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So again, you want to open up something called Postman, right? That's going to be the platform we're going to be using to send APIs essentially, right? right? Now, after you have either added a number or you bought a number, what you want to do is you want to come over to a platform that we call Postman, right? Essentially, Postman is going to be the platform that is going to be allowing us to send API requests, which is exactly what we want. So again, if you come back all the way over to here, this is going to be this double curly bracket that we actually need to paste in. So if we get this, Right here, if we come back to Postman, again, make sure to sign into Postman, click up the top, create a new API request and make sure it's switched to post, right? Paste this in here and then we're going to need a few things, right? So again, we're going to need to put in this IP little thing right here. What you want to do is you want to come back, come back to termination, I believe it is. Yep, right here. 
and then paste in your little username right here or whatever you want to call it. Put it in there and then come back, get this. And then put it in at the end, right? So again, this is going to be the thing that you're going to need to get the credential ID. So if we come back here, right, we're going to need the credential ID, which is to register and associate your phone number. So again, come back here, make sure to click send. But before you do that, within the authorization sections, right, you need to add an auth and make sure it is, um, I believe it's bearer token. And then this is going to be the um, token that you have inside VAPI, right? So if you come back to your VAPI dashboard, come into API keys, right? Get your private API key, copy it in here, right? And then go from there, right? So again, if we come back to here, and then what you want to do is you want to go over to this little section, HTTPS slash credential, come back to here, paste that in and click send. Now everything should, should work. All right, awesome. And after you have sent that API request for this little credential type right here, you want to get this ID number, right? This ID number is going to be used to create our next API request, which is going to be creating the phone number. So again, let's go back over to a new request. Go ahead and click create, switch it to post. And then for this URL right here, we want to come back to the VAPI docs, right? And it's going to need to be this little HTTP request right here. So again, copy this from the docs, come back over to here and then post it in there, right? And then before we go ahead and design the body, we want to go over to authorizations and make sure you have your auth type set to bearer token and then your private API token will be already stored in there, right? Then from there, once you have that done, we'll go back over to body. And then what you want to do is you want to come back over the docs and then paste in this little dash D section right here. Come in, paste that in, come back to postman, right? And then from there, what you want to do is we want to put in our number and our credential ID. So our credential ID is the whole reason why we did this first API request to get this, right? So again, if we come back, copy this in, come over to here and then awesome. So again, that's our credential ID put in. And then all we need to do is get our phone number. So if we come back to VAPI right here, we paste this number and then we come back, paste it in, right? And once you put in that number, you should be all good to go. We can go ahead and click send and boom, 201 created. So again, if we come back to our VAPI dashboard, and then we come into phone numbers, boom, it just appeared right there. So again, that's exactly how you can connect your Twilio number all the way over to VAPI. Now, I want to cover one more important thing, which is going to be porting numbers. So again, this is how you are going to be able to port existing numbers that either, you know, you have clients from or you want to port an existing number and not buy a new number on VAPI. So right, and now I also just want to cover how to actually port numbers. So essentially porting means just porting in an existing phone number, right? That's not on Twilio. So what you can actually do is you can actually go ahead and start a portability check right here, right? So again, I really can't give you a guide on how to do this, but again, this is how you check um, the, the, the existing numbers portability, you know, availability, which is essentially what we call it, right? So again, you'll need to actually look into the certain number you have, the certain telephony provider you have, whatever country it is, and you're going to need to get this um, destination account, right? So essentially what Twilio is going to be doing is it's going to be finding the details of that number and just seeing if it's available to actually port, right? And then from there, once you have done this, you can just, you can go, you know, you can go down this process, select the phone number. So again, it's going to be finding the destination, then it'll find the number, review eligible numbers, and then it'll request the porting. So that's how you can actually go through the porting process. So again, if you did enjoy this video, um, make sure to go down to my free resource hub. I've got a ton, ton of free resources, exactly how to learn, um, build and deploy these voice AI agents. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.